Hi, so here we are at Lightning Hack Day in Munich and uh, we are with Rene. Hi. Yeah. Hi. Uh, so uh, Rene is uh, mostly famous in the space, as I can say, um, with your educational lighting videos. So can you tell us more about that? What do you, what do, you do in this case? Yeah, so um, when, when I first joined Lightning community about one year ago, um, I was really interested in becoming a protocol developer, which to some degree I still try to do, because I think it's important to have more also independent people looking over this. But I realized that the Lightning community has a problem of onboarding new developers. So I thought, well, I worked in education for quite some time, why not filling this gap? So I tried to create a YouTube channel where I teach people how they can create a Lightning app, how certain principles in Lightning work, what's the difference between Lightning and Bitcoin, um, even something like why is Bitcoin Cash not working, or sometimes stuff that is not only for, for developers like um, what I'm with is about the Lightning Network, which I can easily debunk, stuff like that, yeah. Yeah, so actually I watched some of the, your latest uh, videos about uh, like the, the Gutgesagt uh, YouTuber who, yeah. uh, who has some misconceptions about Bitcoin and Lightning, for example. So what, what misconceptions do people usually have about Lightning that you help uh, clarify and debunk? So that is... I cannot answer this on a like global scale because it's very particular. In the case of Kurzgesagt, what I thought was um, sad is that Kurzgesagt is a channel that has, I think, something like 10 million people following and he's trying to explain stuff well, in short terms for layman, right? And he was kindly asked to do a video about Bitcoin and he mainly said, I would not do it because I have eight disadvantages of Bitcoin that I see. And I looked at them and it was very clear that these are disadvantages that are propagated by mainstream media who don't understand Bitcoin and he never really looked at this. And this really upset me where I said, you know what, I have to give a response to this. I cannot leave this alone, right? Um, so yeah, I fought against them, but honestly I forgot which one. <laughs> I mean, just a, kind of a couple or I don't know, one, one, one or two. It's like, I don't know, uh, that lightning is, I don't know, an altcoin or that lightning is... Uh, try, uh, requires trust, something of that. So that yeah, so, so so for example, I mean, this is a frequent one that they say uh, lightning routing does not work or it requires centralized centralized lightning banks, right? And I mean, uh, we, we don't know this yet, right? I mean, yes, obviously, if we would have like one centralized lightning node and everybody would connect to this, this would work very efficiently. Well, to some degree, because this node would have to manage all the channels and connections, right? Scaling a web architecture is also not so easy, like ask the people at Google or Facebook or Amazon how they do this. But um, this would work, but for that we would not need Lightning, right? We could use a custodial solution right away anyway. Um, so we don't know how the network will evolve, how many stakeholders there are going to be. But what we do know is that the protocol itself is permissionless, everybody can enter it, everybody can participate. And what we also do know is how social networks in general emerge. And there we don't see much centralization. So for example, these pictures that are floating around, for a layman, yes, this looks very central that there is one node that has a lot of connections, but from a um, statistical point of view, that's not very central. If this node fails, the entire network would still work perfectly. Right, so um, that is something that, where misconceptions are really flowing around, which, which I think is a bad thing. Uh, can, can you tell us a bit more about uh, how you um, how to how to make your content? How you first of all decide what question to make a video about, and then how do you uh, how do you go about actually producing this video? What steps do you take? So, to some degree, I. So, so, so when I worked in education, I always liked to educate about stuff that I wanted to learn about. <laughs> right? so, so to some degree, it's really my curiosity, saying, hey, there is some statement flowing around. What do I actually know about this? What can I find out about this? And then I actually learn about something, and then I say, well, now I learned about it, now I can talk about it. Right? So, so this is one part of the game. And then obviously there is some stuff where I'm saying, well, there's a clear gap missing. So for example, the first videos I did was this Hack Lab series, where I was explaining how quickly you can create a Lightning application. I think now Pierre Rochard, uh, no, sorry, um, William O'Burney, uh, who is with Chaincode, he wrote um, a couple of blog articles of how you get running with a full stack uh, web application on LND. 
and I filled this void um, with sea lightning and the video and yeah, I think people liked it and knew how to like get running. So yeah, then when I know this, I create a script usually. So I really have a written down script. I know how many shots I want to take. I know uh, what I want to say because when you follow my channel, you will see that um, the videos are very short and precise. They're very on the point. I try not to talk around stuff long like we do in the interview, right? <laughs> yes, yeah, 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 it's just another channel. It's a different format. It's yeah. perfectly fine, right? But in my, in my YouTube channel, it's different. Um, and then, uh, in the beginning, I was always trying to also present what I wanted to present by the script, but I realized that this is not so natural. So now what I'm doing is, after I have the script, I maybe shoot one minute of video content, and then maybe I already do some programming, if it involves programming, I do all the post-production and cutting together, and then from there on I do the next scene or the next couple of scenes. So, so it's this iterative process, where I don't have to remember every word. Mm -hmm. yep. So how, how does it take to make a single video? Usually about two days. About two days. It's actually quite uh, quite a lot of work. I mean, it varies, obviously. So for example, I think the um, the video I put most time in was the uh, onion routing HTLC oh, video. Oh yeah, yeah. Which, no, when I watched it, it really it explains in, with those envelopes how actually the information gets propagated through lightning, lightning nodes, and uh, it really helped me understand how it works. So. Yeah. So uh, I was watching another YouTube video to learn how to make those envelopes. Uh -huh. <laughs> No, so it, it, you know, it's, it's so amazing, like in our digital age, where everything is like video generated graphics, where somebody actually takes a piece of paper, like, and makes an envelope and put it in another envelope, and it is all like real paper in real, uh, <laughs> real physical world. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a mathematician, I'm an IT guy, I'm a geek, right? But I always learned that you have to use the right medium for the right thing. And I was very curious when I created this fundraiser for the document camera, which I used to create this video, if people would actually support this or if they would say, why do you need a document camera? This is so like physical and offline. Um, but yeah, I have the feeling also that many people like this video. And yeah, but, but this one took, I think, three to four days. Yeah. And this ne neglects the fact that I had to read the bowls and understand onion routing, right? Yeah. And I read the Sphinx paper, which took me maybe a week or one and a half weeks so but I mean this is stuff I'm learning anyway and so yeah if you count this and then a video takes really a lot of time yeah 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 I see so uh, cool we'll definitely leave a link in the, in the description so you can subscribe to Renee's channel and I highly recommend it so some kind of general closing thoughts on the developments of Bitcoin and Lightning and just the space in general yeah be patient um, it's it's great if you do experiments if you run your main and node but uh, be patient that there's still a lot of stuff going on with protocol development and it still needs some time until we can really say the software is finally at a state where we say let's go to the moon. And I understand the excitement because I personally also think it's one of the coolest technologies but keep it slow, that's probably a good idea. Yeah, it's better to make it uh, slow but correctly than rush and break everything. Yeah, and since I've heard that this channel is about any blockchain technology, Bitcoin is the best. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this event is very Bitcoin-centric, and I mean, uh, I'm kind of not considering myself a kind of an ag aggressive type of Bitcoin maximalist, but I definitely agree that Bitcoin is the most promising tech, and Lightning is very exciting development. That's why I'm moving into that uh, into that area. So uh, yeah, thank you for your attention, and uh, stay tuned for next videos.